Okay, today's story is The Tale of Two Bad Mice by Beatrix Potter. Open your eyes and turn on your ears. Here we go. Once upon a time, there was a very beautiful doll's house. It was red brick with white windows and it had real muslin curtains and a front door and a chimney. It belonged to two dolls called Lucinda and Jane. At least it belonged to Lucinda, but she never ordered meals. Jane was the cook, but she never did any cooking because the dinner had been bought ready-made in a box full of shavings. So there's the two dolls that live in the dollhouse. There were two red lobsters and a ham, a fish, a pudding, and some pears and oranges. They would not come off the plates, but they were extremely beautiful. So there's the beautiful food. Remember, it's dollhouse food. One morning, Lucinda and Jane had gone out for a drive in the doll's perambulator. There was no one in the nursery, and it was very quiet. Presently, there was a little scuffling, scratching noise in a corner near the fireplace, where there was a hole under the skirting board. Tom Thumb put out his head for a moment and then popped it in again. Tom Thumb was a mouse. See him popping his little head in and out? A minute afterwards, Hunkamunka, his wife, put her head out too. And when she saw that there was no one in the nursery, she ventured out on the oilcloth under the coal box. So there's Hunkamunka and Tom Thumb. The doll's house stood at the other side of the fireplace. Tom Thumb and Hunkamunka went cautiously along the, across the hearthrug. They pushed the front door. It was not fast. And not fast means it wasn't closed. Tom Thumb and Hunkamunka went upstairs and peeped into the dining room. Then they squeaked with joy. Such a lovely dinner was laid out upon the table. There were tin spoons and lead knives and forks and two dolly chairs, all so convenient. Look how excited they are. Tom Thumb set to work at once to carve the ham. It was beautiful, shiny yellow, streaked with red. The knife crumpled up and hurt him. He put his finger in his mouth. It is not boiled enough. It is hard. You have a try, Hunkamunka. Hunkamunka stood up in her chair and chopped at the ham with another lead knife. It's as hard as the hams at the cheesemongers, said Hunkamunka. The ham broke off the plate with a jerk and rolled under the table. Let it alone, said Tom Thumb. Give me some fish, Hunkamunka. See the ham on the floor under the table? Hunkamunka tried every tin spoon in turn. The fish was glued to the dish. Then Tom Thumb lost his temper. temper. He put the ham in the middle of the floor and hit it with the tongs and with the shovel. Bang, bang, smash, smash. The ham flew all into pieces for underneath the shiny paint, it was made of nothing but plaster. Oh my goodness, look at him. Then there was no end to the rage and disappointment of Tom Thumb and Hunkamunka. They broke up the pudding, the lobsters, the pears, and the oranges. As the fish would not come off the plate, they put it into the red hot crinkly paper fire in the kitchen, but it would not burn either. How silly they are. Tom Thumb went up the kitchen chimney and looked out at the top. There was no soot. While Tom Thumb was up in the chimney, Hunka Munka had another disappointment. She found some tiny canisters upon the dresser labeled rice, coffee, sago, but when she turned them upside down, there was nothing inside except red and blue beads.
then those mice set to work to do all the mischief they could, especially Tom Thumb. He took Jane's clothes out of the chest of drawers in her bedroom and he threw them out of the top floor window. But Hunka Munka had a frugal mind. After pulling half the feathers out of Lucinda's bolster, she remembered that she herself was in want of a feather bed. See him throwing the clothes out the window? With Tom Thumb's assistance, she carried the bolster downstairs and across the hearth rug. It was difficult to squeeze the bolster into the mouse hole, but they managed it somehow. See Tom Thumb helping Hunka Munka get the bed down? Then Hunka Munka went back and fetched a chair, a bookcase, a birdcage, and several small odds and ends. The bookcase and the birdcage refused to go into the mouse hole. Hunka Munka left them behind the coal box and went to fetch a cradle. Hunka Munka was just returning with another chair when suddenly there was a noise of talking outside upon the landing. The mice rushed back to their hole and the dolls came into the nursery. Look at, there they are, they're coming back in in their stroller. What a sight met the eyes of Jane and Lucinda. Lucinda sat upon the upset kitchen stove and stared, and Jane leant against the kitchen dresser and smiled, but neither of them made any remark. Look at them, they're just shocked at what they found. The bookcase and the birdcage were rescued from under the coal box, but Hunka Munka has got the cradle and some of Lucinda's clothes. Look at her now, she's wearing Lucinda's clothes. And she has a baby for the cradle. She also put some useful pots and pans and several other things. But the nurse said, I will set a mouse trap. So that is the story of the two bad mice, but they were not so very, very naughty after all, because Tom Thumb paid for everything he broke. He found a crooked sixpence under the hearth rug, and upon Christmas Eve, he and Hunka Munka stuffed it into one of the stockings of Lucinda and Jane. See, they're putting the coin in the stocking. Very early, every morning before anybody is awake, Hunka Munka comes with her dustpan and her broom to sweep the dolly's house. The end. So that's the story of the tale of two bad mice by Beatrix Potter. Now let's go do some art. Okay, so for today's art, we're going to do our own Hunka Munka or Tom Thumb. So you have a mouse cut out and we're gonna put them inside of a salad spinner. And don't be afraid to use the salad spinner because this paint washes off. And I am gonna use paint. So I'm gonna remove the lid and I'm gonna put my mouse shape inside. And then I'm gonna dribble just a little bit. Of white. Oh, that was more than I wanted, but that's okay. And then a little bit of brown paint. Okay. Now I'm going to put my salad spinner cap back on and I'm going to spin. And this is going to recreate spin art. using the spinning motion to make the paint spin. Oh, okay, he didn't spin as much. Let me put him back in again. And we just have to do some more. He's 
still just getting stripes. And I think that's actually okay. But you can just keep spinning him. I'm thinking what's happening is he's getting stuck in my spinner because he's a little bit big. So that you can just keep playing with it and playing with it all you want. Wonder. Let's try an experiment and let's just try a little teensy drop. Because this is art. So it's fun to play with it. Let's see what that does. Maybe a little slower. No, it's because he's getting stuck. But we love to use a salad spinner in room one for art. And we usually get more spread out results than this one is. But I do think I like it. So we're gonna keep this and we're gonna let him dry a little bit. And then we're gonna stick on an eye or draw an eye and some whiskers to make our Tom Mouse and that's it for today's art. Okay, so now we're on to science. In today's science, we're gonna use a sandwich baggie filled with water and seal. And I have a couple pencils. If you have more, you can use more. If you only have one, just use one, but they need to be sharpened. And what we're going to do is we're going to stick the, the pencil in the baggie and it's not gonna let the water leak out. We're gonna stick it all the way through. The reason the water doesn't leak out is because the plastic has long polymers that seal around the pencil and that keeps it closed. Or you could just say because the plastic of the baggie seals itself around the pencil and keeps the water from spilling out. Now you're going to want to take the pencils out. You need to do that outside because as soon as you take the pencil out, the water is going to come out. So here we go. We have our plastic baggie full of water. I've got it sealed tight and I have my first sharpened pencil. I'm going to stick it in. Let's see how it goes. Look, it works. So the plastic baggie just formed a seal around both ends of it. Let's try another one. Same thing. It's sealing up. But like I said, I'll take it outside and I'll use this to water the garden because that water is going to come out. Okay, so that was today's science. Have fun with it. And like I said, if you have a lot of pencils, go for it. Stick them all over it and just keep watching how amazing it is. And then back to our art. Now, the spin, out did, spin art did not come out like I was hoping it would. Um, in the classroom, we normally get a good spin and the um, paint will just spread out. My paint might be too old. Maybe that's why it didn't spin. Um, or maybe the mouse was too big. Tom Thumb's just too big of a mouse for the spinner. I'm not sure, but nevertheless, this is art. So I'm gonna go with it. And if you don't have a spinner, I hope you decorate your um, Hunka Monka or Tom Thumb mouse any way you like. I'm just gonna add some details. I have a Sharpie and I've already colored his nose. And I'm gonna give him some whiskers to go along. And I'm gonna give him a little black eye. And again, I'm only giving him one eye because it's the side of his face. And maybe, you know, I could probably add the inside of his ear this ear, the inside of it would be facing the other way. That's the perspective. So I'm not going to add one on that side. Oh, maybe some toes. Let's give him some toes. And there's my Tom Thumb Bad Mouse. Thank you for watching and we'll do more tomorrow. Bye-bye.